and we have to clear episode one of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Press the X button. I will. I did. <laughs> I've never played an Ace Attorney before. Objection! A game you're very familiar with. Played them a lot, have you, did? I'll get caught. Not like this. <gasps> Someone like him. Good lord. <laughs> August 3rd, 947 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Screaming over here? Yeah, it's him. <laughs> Death, despair. Oh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. Sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. Butts what? Fence panels? Larry butts into things? Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell him I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong? Oh, it's, it's all over. I, I finished. Finished! I can't live in the world without her. I can't. You took her away from me, Nick. Who did this? Uh, oh, Nick, you gotta tell me who took my baby away. Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? These people say it was you. But we know different. We know it wasn't. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story of a man named Butthead. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. A school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but, but you know. <sighs> 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. <laughs> One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He's, he just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone. He's a good guy at heart. That and I own one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Butts is number two. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Yolanda. The um, defense is ready, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I am um, a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. Conducting this trial will recite the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. Your client's sake, I hope from your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. It's right, given the circumstances. You should have a test to assert your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> I'm shaking my eyes like fading, turning into William Shatner. The test will consist of a few simple questions, I just don't clearly concise. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. It's Larry Butts. Defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you, you will find. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? This one. I'm glad I read the case report. <laughs> I can't tell us how so many times. It's. Wait. Oh, oh. Oh, no way, I forgot. So, right here. Who is? Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? I don't even know the victim's name. Oh, the victim. Oh, uh, of course I know the victim's name. I um, just forgot. Temporarily? I think I feel a migraine coming up. I think the thing's listening to court record. Press the other button to check it every time, okay? Remember to check it off. Get some details, okay? Just the right who is the victim in this case. Is Cindy Stone, age 22, the victim in this case, a model she lived in a pub by herself. Winston Kane. Right, okay, so Cindy Stone. My fee. The puns! I need to keep that out ready, don't I? Sit the block and sit in the stone. Now. Uh, um, the victim's name is Sidney Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? Trauma to the head. She died because she was in the blood culture. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You answered all my questions. There's no reason why we should proceed. We seem much more relaxed than Mr. Rice. Good for you. Thank you. Don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, yes, sir. My fee. Or my fee. A 
as in, that's my fee. <laughs> get that one. <laughs> oh, she did. She seems that word play as well. She was really bright with this one, she? It's not the worst time in the game, oh god. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Right told just told us to make Mr. Right with one object. Would you explain in the court just what that object was? But the murder weapon was a statue of the thin can. Objection! How you doing, Pixel? The stand lying on the floor next to the victim. See, what is sex? It's in two minutes. They call me the Finker. So it's actually rather poor record. Right, yes, sir, yes, I'm looking. Jesus Christ. Tastes like a badge of thingy bill. Carries in her judgment. Rather heavy. Well, gee. <laughs> right. You should have paid attention to the evidence added during the trial. The evidence is the only thing you should have in court. I just did. I just did. I checked it. I bloody checked it. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution has the defendant, Mr. Batts, to the stand. But it's actually a surname Fee, uh, Faye, which is a synonym for the word psychic, or psychic abilities being a central fee. Oh, okay. But it the way the way it's written, it's written you can see it's my fee. Is it my fa? Because it could be my fa, but it just looks like me. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. <laughs> Yeah, puns galore, yes. <laughs> Mr. Bats, is it not true that the victim had this to do too? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Don't know why his voice is like this. He had an accident. When he was at school, when his balls dropped, they dropped too far. And that's why his voice is this way. <laughs> I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls. I'll see you in Ever. <sighs> Did you get that shovel that you took from Morgana to do? What's it to you anyway? Just the bats. The right to describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned him and was seeing other men. She had just returned to her seeing the role the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. We have to get it first. I ran for this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. So I arrived home from Paris on 7.30. So that is the 30th of July because we're looking at, uh, well, we're looking at thingy time. American time in a Japanese game. For 
our American audience. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Let's have a look. That's all we get. <laughs> Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. Again, steady. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, all the girls who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Of her now. Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, objection. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. <laughs> it's like his mouth is on when the around about the spaghetti junction. Should I wait and see what happens or stop him from answering? Objection! No idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oh, gosh. Dude, what do you mean irrelevant? <laughs> You're sleeping. <laughs> Brilliant. That cheating she dog. the afterlife. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused murder and the accused motives is clear to everyone. Now you're stupid. Yes, quite. Oh boy, yeah, this is so not looking good. Next question. Uh, you went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you? Well, did you? Or did you not? Huh? <laughs> well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Uh oh, he went bad. Uh, no. I think answering honesty on the, honestly in this one. For the reason he was there. Stopping him from answering is is kind of obstruction. I know I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I was, I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts, dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so I, I didn't see her. <laughs> the other, the defendant is lying. The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Ah, the real killer comes close. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body, just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing. No, I'm <coughs> sorry. <laughs> he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. <laughs> Order. Order in the court. Is this just justice funds? Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honour. Yeah, this, this is bad. On the day of the murder. Oh, sorry. <coughs> And the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the building. Please bring Mr. Frank Schwitt to the stand. Is that how you pronounce it, Frank Schwitt? Yeah, it's him. Mrs. Mr. Schwitt, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is that correct? Oh, oh yes, this guy does, yes. Mr. Schmidt, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell us 
took four to be sure on that day of the murder. Now, before we start this, right? Before we start this, let's tell a joke. Right? Frank saw it. Frank saw it, yes. <laughs> yes, that's that that's the pronunciation. Okay. Of course he saw it. <laughs> <sighs> I can see this 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 trophy taking up much of this stream. <laughs> God's sake. So what I was gonna say, Dave Allen, right? Adam and Eve. And they were talking about Adam and Eve. He's like, with all the stuff in there, like Adam doesn't question that he's a he, he's arrived. He's just appeared. Doesn't question how Eve got there. Doesn't question the differences between them. Eve goes and talks to a snake in a tree that God's told her not to do. And this is a book that we're supposed to put our hand on and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, what in court. <clears throat> so here we go. I'll go and go to the door, so no sense subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing in the park. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving. Dead. Quite and frightened, found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. I had the phone and the apartment wasn't working. Went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly, it was 1 pm. Wait, 1 pm? No. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? The rather, at the time of the murder there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honour. However, some cordless fans do not function normally. The phone that Mr. saw it was, it was one of those. Your Honour, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Right, so, so the electricity in the building was out between the time of the, the so-called murder time that he was on about that's what you can see because it was noon to six now mr wright yes uh yes your honor you may begin your cross-examination <laughs> cross-examination your honor all right mate that's it the real deal uh what exactly am i supposed to do most of the lies in the testimony were just games. Lies? What? He was lying? And the killer was in the Then that witness must have been in his testimony. Which would be lying really in the room. I'm afraid he's not. You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Face. That sounds like a good weird euphemism. So, yeah. See, time of death, right? So, yeah, see, he said the time of death was 1 pm, whereas the time of death was actually between 4 and 5, so there's bullshit right there. Now, yeah, the blackout was fine, that's telling the truth. I 
just did it. I will go in door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man flee the apartment. p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1pm for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts your Thompson report. Your Thompson notes that time of death is sometime after 4pm. There's nobody to, uh, no body to find it at 1pm. Can you explain this three hour gap? Uh, oh, that, uh, um, uh, that's his trouble, the witness did it, forget the time, they didn't. After his testimony, I found that hard to believe. Mr. Sorich, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1pm? Uh, I, uh, well, I, uh, gee, that's a really good question. Which I'd like to put him on the spot. Point out contradictions. Why don't we get more lines? See three one, that whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Do you care to give your testimony again? The time of discovery. You see, when I found the body I heard the time. There was a voice said the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1pm. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You've heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got, I've got this one. I've got this one. I haven't got this one. <laughs> yeah, the TV. Are you sure? The blackout. Yeah, the blackout, because he black because the, the, the thing was blackout, so there was no way there was no electric there was no electricity to it. There it is. Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? Well, no, I guess it might have been a radio. It's not that there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right. I can't put the finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television. The witness has testified. We had the time. Look, I'm trying to give the evidence, right? Eh? Oh, 
just give you the same as before. Oh, yeah, okay. Right. Now. Here we go. Hold it right there. Here we go. You was watching an iPod, how is it? Or an iPad. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Ah! I... well... Uh, the defence has a point. Do you have an explanation for this one, Mr. Sword? No, I... I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah, wait, 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 I remember now. Now, here come the bollocks. This is all it. The court would prefer to hear a quick testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. <laughs> that and you seem rather, rather strange. My, my apologies, Your Honour. It, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sorens. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Here is the time. Here we go. So the next bullshit coming up. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I, I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That, that must have been what I saw. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defence may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? Well, you, you know, with your objection to your evidence, just, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Saw it. Hey, I I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Well, I'm at, if I know. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the written state of this statue is indeed a clock. The next threat just kills it and say it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as my stat as a statue. I apologize. Wait a minute. That's quite bumpy, isn't it? See, so the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony now? With his testimony now? Yes, yes, I do. You wonder, there's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Indeed, the witness knew it was a clock because he. You are lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. But, oh yeah, prove it. Prove I went in there. I'd be better than that. Prove you when you killed her. You, you struck me with a clock. It shocked the blow, triggered the clock's voice. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sword. The sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since you had a weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. Spoke as he looked his rectum. Wait, what? <laughs> Voice was burned into your mind. That's why you 
And he should have, he should burn, burn, give him death. <laughs> order, order in the court, I say. Lorana, uh, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defence's claim. Mr. Wright, you claim the sound of the wind circling from the clock. Do you have any evidence? Waiter announced the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawyer heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawyer, try to talk your way out of this one. Ha! 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 You forgot one thing. Uh-oh, what's he talking about now? Well, it may have seemed like that clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. She didn't arrive back. Unfortunately. I can't present it, I can I? This ends the cross examination, and Mr. Frank saw it. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slam. Uh, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry, I failed you. But it didn't allow me to do the passport bit. Nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sword. Right, right, 
Right, right, right, right. Can we take the please on the top of the fair slope? Yes, yes, we can. Wait! Maybe I can prove it. I must have had it somewhere to prove it, right? I don't know what happened. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock has already been stolen dead and right. Found evidence to support this claim? Of course. Piece of evidence to the court record that proved my claim to look at the Ha! Tough words! Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see the evidence that proves why the clock is on the floor. Turned home from the draw of the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. But it's 4 pm here, it's 1 am the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Truthfully, for you, Mr. Surrit, or should I say, Mr. Did It? <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. Order, 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 I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness. Uh, so it's the rest of the rest of the Very well. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm rather impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defence so quickly. I'm a true culprit at the same time. At this point, this is only formality, but... It's court to find the, the, the dependent, the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty. And with that, this court is adjourned. It turns out Miss Nat Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. When he was searching a place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. August 3rd, 2.32pm. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. I still can't believe you won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. So, so thanks, Chief. I am all to you. Not at all, not at all. You thought you were in battle, didn't they? But a little bit helped. It's been well since I've seen a child in such a satisfying mood. I've never seen the Chief look this happy. She's this flat, I imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry! Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Wow! Mr. Positive here! Good. Wait. No. I mean, bad. Bad, bad, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. Cindy Windy. Oh, dear. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Uh, Harry? Yes, you. In fact, you see the headlines now. Harry Dart Citizen. <laughs> um, thanks, I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate dinner, movie, butchery. Oh, no, I couldn't... <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> here, take this. It's a present. I don't want to have a murder weapon as a present. A present for me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... I 
I made this clock for her. I made one for her, one for me. evidence now. Also, hopefully, you realise things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. You never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think I'm glad you've done. Can we be honest? Yeah, I guess so. So, how about dinner with me? Steady. <laughs> Steady. <laughs> You're a pretty toast to innocent butts. Are butts innocent? Are they? For some of the smell, you think, oh, that's not innocent. Flirting with us. And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Dick, it's good to have friends. I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you can't come and get my I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the centre of another incident. And I promised to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise I wouldn't be able to keep. Uh-oh. Thus end. The first turnabout. Lovely. Should be done. Yes, save our progress to this point. Bing bing! What we done? We got the trophy. That's what we were after. Two. 
you save the game here, close the game. It's a me ah, right, okay, so I just close the game. Fair enough. Lovely, right. Cool, cool beans. So, what's next? As we now hit £2.20 in terms of thingy. I'll check that out shortly. So, uh, oh, it's the original Lords of the Fallen. That will be next. Right, okay, so I have to turn this off because it's beyond the PlayStation, I believe. On PlayStation 4. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to quickly nip to the loo. But I will be back and we'll play some more of this. And I'll also, while we're here, 